Welcome to American Survival Guide Television with your host, Amber Hargrove. Hey guys, what's going on? Amber Hargrove here with Jeff Zaus. What is going on, brother? How are you? Amber, I am doing well. Um, I, forgive me for being in, in a car right now, but I happen to be stranded in Texas uh, during this coronavirus outbreak. So I, I'm doing the best I can, but uh, I'm happy to be joining you this morning. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry to hear that. I'm in Libby, Montana, and you know, we're we're normal here, and I feel so bad for all these people struggling, and you are you just trying to avoid all types of flights, any type of travel like that? Yeah, and, and I've actually had multiple flights canceled because of the airlines cutting down on their total number of flights out, and uh, it's just a problem, but honestly, it's very interesting to see and witness firsthand what's going on. Uh, I'm just north of Dallas. So uh, witnessing what's happening in one of the largest cities in America, um, it's, it's truly frightening, some of the things that we're seeing down here. So it, um, uh, you know, I, I hope we don't have to use our survival skills in the next couple months, but uh, it, it's an interesting time in the world for sure. It definitely is. And you know, a lot of people are reaching out to survivalists and saying, hey, what do I do in this type of scenario, situations? Have you had any type of fans reach out to you and ask you questions or how to be prepared? I have. I have. Actually, for the past weeks, I've been receiving hundreds of messages in my inboxes asking me for advice. And and I've been very reluctant to give that up until this week because nobody has really had all the answers. Um, and even now, nobody has all the answers. And so I've been reluctant to lead people one direction or another because I didn't want to lead somebody in the wrong direction. But but now I think there's an overwhelming consensus that um, uh, that we as a country must protect the old and vulnerable. Um, and, and I think that we all must come together and be responsible um, and, and limit ourselves socially in order to prevent and and slow the spread of this virus and so that's been my main message this week has it which has been be responsible let's all join together let's all be united to help others and not just think of ourselves you know not start hoarding not start panicking uh really think of our neighbor before we think of ourselves you know that's a really good mentality and a lot of people some people are just reacting as hurting as they're running to the stores they're emptying all the shelves or maxing out their credit cards and it is a little scary when you just want to go to the store to buy peanut butter and jelly or bread for your kids and you realize, oh, my gosh, you know, all the shelves are empty. It is really scary watching on the news and how this is actually going to evolve in a week or two. They're saying, you know, try to sit tight for 14 days and just to kind of monitor it. But you're right. Nobody really knows what's going on except for what we're being told what we should do. So great um, advice to give you the people out there and your fans, Jeff. We appreciate that so much. And. So getting to you as a survivalist, you have been on Naked and Afraid multiple times and dual survival as well. Your experience speaks for itself on who you are as a survivalist. And uh, let's talk about that. Like Naked and Afraid, greatest moment for you. What would that be? Naked and Afraid. Well, <laughs> there were a lot of difficult <laughs> moments. Um, that's for sure. On honestly, I think the greatest moment on Naked and Afraid to be honest with you, was waking up on the morning of day 60 in the yeah. Philippines with uh, my partner, Laura Zara. Uh, we woke up early before anybody else, and we walked out to the, to the edge of the ocean together, and we sat down on a big rock sticking up out of the water, and we just watched the sunrise, oh. and just shoulder to shoulder, didn't say a word to each other because we didn't have to. We knew that one of the greatest adventures in our entire lives was coming to a close. And and while normally on a Naked and Afraid challenge, as I'm sure you know, uh, we're ready to get out of there. We're ready to uh, to go and get our first meal and sleep, in, and sleep in a bed. And we're ready to get the heck out of there. But that was actually the first time on a Naked and Afraid challenge I didn't want to leave. Um, and, and, you know, that jungle had really grown on us. And so watching that last sunrise on day 60, I would have to say it was one of the most bittersweet moments I've ever experienced. Wow. I mean, watching and seeing you guys just thriving in general, you guys have been partners through multiple challenges, actually. Laura is a well-respected survivalist. I just love that girl. 
And watching you guys together just reminded me of your guys' first challenge. And your guys' personality really speaks for itself on who you are, which I love watching. You guys are entertaining. You're funny. You bring comedy to some of the most serious situations where I think it's a natural reaction for us survivalists to react that way. Like we get really stressed out and scared, but then we're like trying to crack jokes. I mean, trying to make the light of the situation one when you think, well, I could have really died. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh yeah. It. Uh, I mean, really, it, that's true. What one of the most important things about survival is remaining positive, and yeah. having a good attitude. And and I think what made Laura and I such great partners. Uh, we've now been together for a hundred days on Naked and Afraid. Um, and and I I think one thing that made us um, so successful together was our positive attitudes. Both of us were laughing and singing and like, I still have songs stuck in my head to this day uh, for singing out there so much. And, oh and I think that that, um, you know, that, that's a good lesson for those that are just beginning survival or wanting to enhance uh, their level of survival skills is to be positive. That can get you through some of the most difficult situations. It really can, especially multiple personalities when you deal with more than just one partner. And you know that for a fact firsthand. And uh, mm -hmm. I think of sometimes in the Amazon as well about the multiple people I was with. And I, I miss my Amazon wife, Giovanna, all the time. It's weird because she was my <laughs> comfort zone out there. And it's something you just greatly appreciate and want to be a part of it. And I just I still keep in touch with her. And I know you do, too. I watch you on so many different social media platforms, Jeff. You are really crushing it out there. And I'm so proud of you, brother. Seriously. Thank you so much. I mean, really, thank you. But honestly, I'm just having fun. Like, I'm really, I'm really not even trying to, you know, um, uh, you know, to do, you know, the, the, the hardest things out there. Right now, I'm just having fun and I'm enjoying life and I'm really enjoying these challenges that I'm doing. Uh, one of the greatest times of my life was when I did dual survival alongside, oh, yeah. uh, you know, EJ Snyder. Uh, we were like two kids in a sandbox out there, you know, <laughs> jumping from country to country, location to location. Uh, I mean, there were times after filming where we would literally pick thorns out of each other's skin and, and, you know, just tell each other, suck it up buttercup. And like, we were just loving life, you know, just loving the pain, loving the discomfort and just loving the challenge. Um, and, and I think that's why we do what we do as survivalists is, uh, we all have this weird fascination with challenging ourselves and pushing our minds and our bodies to the limits. And I think that's, what's so beautiful and, and I love it. And I don't have plans to stop anytime soon. I figured you were going to keep trucking along with this. And, uh, whenever I, I want to ask people this all the time, what is your one moment when you realize, whoa, you are in hundred percent survival mode and you could die out here? What's your moments where your like greatest fear comes in? It's instilled on you. Yeah, it it hasn't happened very often, but um, one moment in particular is uh, when EJ and I we were filming Dual Survival, and we were filming in Botswana, and and we arrived to Botswana, and it was in the middle of a historic drought. Uh, it hadn't rained in months in that country. I mean, there, there, there was a famine. There, there were animals dying left and right from from lack of water. And EJ and I, we had been walking across the desert landscape for two and a half days, no water. And and we we understand that this is a challenge, but we also, of course, we understand that this is also a TV show. And and EJ and I were both thinking, oh my gosh, like. Like, should we be pushing it this far? It was getting very scary. We were getting lightheaded. You know, I could see in his eyes that he he was getting scared. I was getting worried. And um, and then that's the moment we started looking at these wet elephant dung piles as our next source of water. Um, and, and that's when that's when it hit me. That's when I'm like, okay, I know I'm in a tough situation right now because I, I would never ever drink poop water <laughs> unless <laughs> i absolutely had to and i'm telling you amber it was one of the worst things i have ever ingested in, in my entire life we've both eaten some very questionable things but this elephant yeah. dung water as we wrung that out into our oh. mouths we must have each drank in a liter or a liter and a half each of this dung water and um we were throwing up in our mouths and we were having to swallow the the throw up and 
And it was the it was the real deal. We knew that we either do this or we call it quits. And EJ and I, we've never quit at anything in our lives. And so it but what was amazing is it it got us through. It gave us the the just amount of moisture and water we needed to continue going for another day and a half before we found water. And I didn't learn until later on, but elephant dung is actually one of the safest dungs on the planet that you can actually drink from. Because wow. an ele- yeah, because an elephant has such a quick and fast digestive system that it doesn't have nearly enough time to develop a lot of that harmful bacteria in the gut. Uh, it, they eat it and they pass it so quickly. And so it turns out neither one of us got sick. Um, and and you know we went on and we completed the challenge. But uh, you know it, it's about when we push ourselves to those kind of limits, we learn. Um, some unbelievable and extraordinary things about about the world and about nature that can get us through. And so that, that was one of those experiences. Oh my gosh, Jeff. I had no idea. I've got to, well, I'm going to go back now and I'm going to watch my <laughs> Dual Survival. What season is it that you and EJ are on? Um, it is the final season of Dual Survival. Um, it, depending on what platform you watch it on, it may be season seven, season nine. Uh, but it was the last one aired. So um, it... Uh, <laughs> Oh, we I wish you guys summer. could have came back and did like at least one more. I mean, your guys' personalities were great. You're exactly what we needed to see. It wasn't fighting and tension like the prior season. So it's nice seeing that camaraderie that you guys have as like brothers and just going out there rocking it and having fun. You could tell that you guys on your episodes were actually enjoying it and you got excited. So when you say like kids in a sandbox playing out there, I completely, I read that on TV. I know your guys' personalities. You guys were so entertaining. So you guys have got to check this out, Dual Survival, the last season of them. And wow, so epic, Jeff, so epic. So every time I see you on Facebook, you always have this beautiful lady with you. Let's talk about her for a second. Oh boy. So yeah, that would <laughs> be my much better half. Um Erin Munoz, my wonderful girlfriend. Uh, she supports me in all the crazy adventures I do. Um, she happens to be a professional photographer and singer. And so her lifestyle kind of is flexible like my own. And so, um, you know, we like to get out together and experience nature on a much less extreme level. Um, (laughs) she refuses to eat bugs. She refuses to go anywhere near snakes or spiders. Um, but you know, she's coming around where, you know, she's, she's learning a little bit more about survival here and there. And, and um, she's actually uh, behind me, several hundred yards, taking our dog for a walk down by the river. And um, so, yeah, so she, uh, it, no, she's wonderful. Uh, not many people um, would be so gracious and supportive to send their significant, their significant other off naked uh, with another woman for 21 or 40 or 60 days. And so um, she's been amazing. And that's one thing I was trying to get at is um, you look at these couples and relationships and you've seen, you know, we have other friends that are survivalists and they've really struggled. I was even one of those as well. And it's so hard in life to find a partner that actually supports you and what you do. And for those people out there that want to get in the survivalist world, that want to go on TV shows out there, your partner really has to support you because not only does it physically start to affect you out there, it gets inside of your head. And we know how that happens. So it, I'm so grateful to see you guys grow as a couple. You guys are so entertaining, by the way, and you guys match each other so well. But we're grateful to see that. So what is up and coming with you next, Jeff? What's your next challenge you have coming up, should I say? Well, yeah, thank you for asking that. So I actually just got done filming um, a new adventure challenge. Um, I'm just th- fresh three weeks out of uh, my survival challenge. And so uh, that one will be airing this summer um, on Discovery Channel, but uh, I can't yet talk about what it is. Of course, um, you know they haven't made an official announcement, but uh, but that's coming up this summer, so that's something to stay tuned for. Uh, but also next spring, uh, climbing season, I plan to uh, go to Mount Everest, and um, and so I'll be at Mount Everest Base Camp next spring um, with an option, possibly. Uh, to summit if everything goes right. Um, If not, it'll be just a a base camp adventure, but that's coming up next spring. So I'm so excited for that because ever since I was a little boy, I've dreamed of stepping foot on Everest and, and, and climbing that, that wonderful, wonderful mountain. And so, um, so that's coming up next spring. I'm super excited for that. 
I'm excited that you set yourself goals and challenges still. I mean, I look at the ages of everybody and a lot of people are like, oh, I'm not going to be able to do that or I can't do that. And then here you are, you're like free living right now, doing what you love. You're passionate about it. Your hobbies are turning into a job because you're getting paid. So is it really a job if you think about it? And you're really setting the bar so high, Jeff, for these people who you inspire just to go out there and attempt to be survivalists or want to learn how to better themselves. So we look forward to watching you, especially through American Survival Guide magazine. We love following all these different types of survivalists. And I look forward to watching you. We're going to have to keep up to date with you, Guy. <laughs> Thank you so much. I mean, honestly, <laughs> like I said earlier, I'm I'm just I'm just having fun. I'm, I'm having the time of my life. And. Um, you know, my father, uh, he passed away a few years ago, but, uh, my dad, he was born with a heart deformity and which led, uh, to every single day of his life was survival in the very real sense, uh, not knowing how long he would live. And, and so my dad taught me that we must live every day, uh, to the absolute fullest and, and, and most joyous that we can, because we don't know when it's going to be the last, um, you know, especially in this chaotic, ever-changing world that we're in now, um, you know, instead of worrying, instead of thinking, you know, that, oh, maybe, uh, geez, is something going to happen? Um, instead, we should relish the opportunity to live another day. And and so, and that's what I'm doing. I have another day on this earth, and by God, I'm going to live it to the best of my ability. I love it. I definitely appreciate that. And for your fans out there that love following you and watching you and new fans, how could they find you on Instagram? So Instagram and Facebook and Twitter, it's all super easy. It's just my name, Jeff Zausch. And so uh, Instagram right now is super hot. It's the happening place. A lot of uh, my up and coming adventures are announced first on Instagram. So I'd invite people to go on over to Instagram, uh, Twitter and Facebook fan page. Of course, everything's covered there as well. So uh, please follow me. Please uh, check me out. I, I My fans are where it's all at. You guys help me to continue doing what I love. And so I, I thank you guys and thank you so much for keeping my dreams alive. Oh, Jeff, that was wonderful. Thank you, brother, so much for joining us on American Survival Guide. And we look forward to following you and staying tuned. So signing off, Amber Hargrave here with Jeff Zaus. And we look forward to watching you. So stay tuned, guys, and we'll keep you up to date. Thank you. It's a pleasure.